Bluetooth headsets are older than you think. But because of how quickly technology is advanced, it seems as though this generation sees nothing special in the invention. We use them for pretty much everything, including streaming our favorite music and podcasts. Yet most people have never thought about where the technology originated from or how it evolved over the years. As one of the most widely used consumer technologies today, the Bluetooth headset has come a long way in a short period of time and has a history that goes back further than you can imagine with remarkable innovations. So if you'd like to explore the major milestones in the history and evolution of the Bluetooth headset, keep watching. The journey to the amazing inventions we enjoy today started with an innovation that came about in the early 1880s. At that time, Bluetooth headsets were not designed for music, but for taking and transferring calls only. Back then, telephone operators needed a way to physically connect everyone's phone call, so this hands-free speaker became the solution. The headset was created by Ezra Gilliland, a close friend of Thomas Edison, and his invention set the bar for other models to come. The first model headset wasn't anything like the ones we use today, when they were first introduced in the 1880s. In fact, it was a headset that would give you a headache and was far from convenient. It looked like a phone cut in half and was usually attached to their heads. Imagine having to carry 10 pounds on your head for an 8-hour work shift. You'd definitely do anything to rip it off before your shift ends. However, thanks to technology, things got better. Not so long after, the headset took a giant leap when a French engineer, Ernest Mecadier, invented a lighter headset in 1891 and recommended putting rubber covers on them to make them more comfortable. Relieving, right? This French engineer was given US patent number 454138 for improvements in telephone receivers that were light enough to be carried while in operation on the operator's head. Mukadir was finally able to build small headsets that weighed less than 1.75 ounces after much testing and improvement. Even better, it was specifically designed to fit the ears and was a remarkable invention at the time. In the same decade, a British telecoms corporation went one step farther and invented an electrophone that can make a switchboard call and hear live performances from London theaters. These headphones closely resembled a stethoscope, with the earpieces linked to a Y-shaped handle that dangled below the chin. The bottom of the handle had a wire that connected directly to the phone line, and once that was done, the phone company would stream music right into the headphones. This was the first time headsets were used specifically for listening to music. The company that invented this electrophone was founded in 1896, starting with just 50 subscribers, which later grew to 1,000 by 1919, and reached its peak in 1923 with slightly over 2,000 subscribers. Also, in a full-page advertisement in a London telephone directory from 1906, it was said that there were 14 theaters that subscribers could tune into on any given night and 15 different churches that they could call on Sundays. Even though the service was small by today's standards, it was extremely popular. And while the electrophone was gaining popularity, in 1910, Nathaniel Baldwin was experimenting with coiled copper wiring at his kitchen table in Utah. In an effort to enhance the sermons at his nearby Mormon temple, he came up with the first recognizable headsets that actually looked like headphones. He was successful in developing a device that could receive sound without the need for electricity, and his original concept established the standard for the ear cup seen in modern headphones. At the time, private investors laughed it off, but the US Navy didn't. Baldwin's headphones caught the Navy's attention, and they decided to do business with him. From that moment on, Baldwin's headphones were used by the Navy for communication. Baldwin's headphones, in contrast to the electrophones, rested on top of the head like contemporary headphones do, with each earpiece connected to a different jack via a separate wire. But even though it served as the foundation for what exists today, Baldwin didn't claim legal rights for this because he thought it was trivial. Then, in 1958, an interesting development in the story of modern headsets was invented that introduced stereo audio. Up until that moment, despite the fact that headsets had two speakers, the same exact signal would travel through each speaker. But stereo headsets came to take advantage of the market. And after John Koss, a musician and businessman, listened to the stereophonic sound through a set of military-grade headsets, he was extremely thrilled. Then he and his friends developed the Koss SP3 stereo headphones after developing a stereophonic phonograph. Obviously, jazz was one of Koss's favorite genres, and he wanted to capture the thrill of a live performance so that anybody, anywhere could enjoy it. Koss then became a well-known audio company, producing every imaginable type of speaker and headphone. But by the end of the 1960s, Koss had a number of competitors in the headset market. During that time, 
companies began creating more affordable headphones that included built-in radio receivers. But Sennheiser's HD414 was introduced in 1968, which was another significant advancement in the 1960s. By using an open design rather than the heavy foam cup, the Sennheiser HD414 ushered in the subsequent significant headphone revolution, making them significantly less bulky and lighter. These were the first open-backed headphones, which allowed outside sound to enter, produced a wider sound, and made them much safer to listen to while moving around. This was something that was still extremely uncommon in personal audio. Additionally, they created colorful foam ear pads, which would quickly become a fashion staple. Their design set the standard for headphones for more than 10 years after they became an instant hit, selling more than 100,000 units in 1969, until the Walkman stormed the market after a decade. It would be difficult to argue against choosing the Sony Walkman as the most significant invention in the history of headphones. All of a sudden, headsets were portable and fashionable. Headphones were still quite large and cumbersome. However, when the Walkman was released, headphones were drastically reduced in size. The ultralight, open-backed headphones that came with the Walkman, which launched in 1979, had a thin headband that allowed you to wear them on your head or hang them around your neck. A headphone revolution was sparked by the Sony Walkman's phenomenal popularity, as everyone had to own a Walkman, which required everyone to buy headphones. Approximately over the course of its existence, Sony sold over 400 million devices, with the headphone market receiving a large portion of that revenue. With the Walkman and headphones on at that time, you'd be the star of your own movie with an amazing all-pervasive soundtrack. Then, the first consumer version of Bluetooth was released in 1999, and the technology that won the Best of Show Technology Award at Comdex was a hands-free mobile headset. This trademarked technology known as Bluetooth, which was named after the 10th century Danish king Harold Bluetooth, transmitted data and audio between two or more devices like speakers, headphones, computers, and phones. And during the late 1990s, when headsets were firmly established in the trendy category, Bluetooth headbands, neckbands, earbuds, over-ears, and open-ear headphones all arrived in every imaginable size and shape. Earbuds also had a market in the 1990s, but they didn't fully take off until the early 2000s. And in 2001, the iPod revolutionized the music industry. People carrying a white rope from their pocket to their ears frequently became normal, and over 300 million iPods, each with a set of earbuds, have been sold since their launch in 2001. But the ancient over-the-ear ear cups, which had been restricted to the homes of devoted music lovers for nearly a generation, made a comeback in order to recreate the bass-heavy sound of the previous headsets for a new music scene that was influenced by rap and hip-hop in the mid-2000s. And since Bluetooth headphones for both ears were already released, the new headsets were wireless and grabbed control of the headphone market. They were a lot smaller and easier to use for the average consumer. In 2010, there was a major growth in the popularity of Bluetooth headphones, driven by companies like Beats. And although the sound quality wasn't quite perfect, it was moving in the right direction. In 2012, Bluetooth headsets became much more stylish with improved sound quality. And now? In 2023, there are not just one, but many options for a Bluetooth headset. So you no longer have to worry about wearing a 10-pound speaker on your head. Just when we thought wireless headsets couldn't get any better, the Bluetooth headset was invented. What do you think is next in the world of Bluetooth headsets? Feel free to tell us in the comments section. See you later!